Okay, what is this lady? Hi, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell, the most fun you can have on the internet. The next half an hour, we're going to join the people from around the world, both Adafruit folks and people in the Adafruit community. We're going to come by and show off what they're working on, whether it be 3D printing or soldering or sewing or knitting or paper mache, whatever they're crafting up in their homes, they're going to come by. Uh, you got a bunch of Adafruit folks and some visitors as well. We're going to be out of here at 750. So uh, when we call on you, just take two, three minutes, show your project so we can uh, get through everybody. Um, let's start with Scott. Adafruit Northwest. Hello. Hello. Uh, as you know, I tend to show projects before I actually start them. And I don't tend to show them finished because I always start them and I don't always finish them. Uh, in fact, I have like my toaster oven board on here that I haven't finished either. Uh, but that's not a, what I was going to show off today. Um, Phil B was out of retro computers, so I, I volunteered to show one off. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to grab it with my headphones on. Oh. I don't have a size constraint quite like Phil B does or a weight constraint. But this is a, an Atari 800 that I picked up. Um, and I just thought I would show, uh, one thing I was surprised I got the Atari 800 and I got, um, an Apple two C, um, and w both of them have this really cool feature that, um, they're pretty accessible in terms of like how you get to the computer itself. So, um, first you can, there's a latch here that you can open up and it's dual cartridge. So most like old video game systems have a single cartridge, but this actually has dual. And I also managed to find a couple of cartridges. So they actually, the cartridges are li labeled like left cartridge. This is basic. I got it for $4. I'm hoping and that with the, the double uh, socket, the socket? The lower. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Hey, JMK. I hope I'm hoping with the left and right cartridges, like one's the left um, most significant bite, and the other is like the least significant bite. Like, how do they? So almost all of the cartridges made for it were left cartridges. I have Wikipedia pulled up here, and they by 1983 they only made one right cartridge. Okay. Um, so I was thinking I'd make a right cartridge Circuit Python to go in there. Okay. Um, and then we could have Basic in there as well. But I also got uh, Deluxe Invaders for it. Sweet. Um, which is cool. And then I also wanted to show if I can. This thing is like 10 pounds. Um, <laughs> so I'm like resting it on my shoulder. But um, the actual behind the cartridges, um, this thing comes off. And the reason it's so heavy is there's this huge hunk of aluminum right here. Um, but these are actually, the first card here is the OS. Uh, it, it's labeled OS. I think it's. Atari OS or something. I don't actually know what OS it is. Uh, and then the three cards next to it are all 16K uh, RAMs, RAM slots as well. So. Like, you can count each bit. Yeah, totally. And uh, I was looking at them, and they're all dip socketed chips. So I'm going to have to pull them out and make sure they're, they're sitting there and, and use Philby's trick to see if any of them get hot when they're powered up as well. Um, but one thing I, I loved about this was uh, it was amazing how accessible everything was uh, with that. So, and you can see I'm missing keys, but that's okay. It was a good deal. Okay. As hey. is. All right. Atari 800. Atari 800. Next up, we're going to go to JP. Yeah, next up, JP. What hey, are you well, making? So, I actually have three things I want to show just because it's uh, nostalgia time. I picked up this Sony Field Recorder, which is an audio cassette recorder that came out in 1978, and they made it until 2005. This thing is built like a tank. It's got like a cast metal uh, front on it. It has VU meters. It has a couple of quarter inch uh, ins. This is the unbalanced one. They also made ones with XLRs for balance mics. But these are what uh, TV stations and reporters um, used as well as people doing like uh, ethnology, ethnographic cultural studies, getting music and folk music and stuff. So super cool recorder and it doesn't work at all uh it actually so shows some signs of powering up but uh i'll have fun digging through that and getting it to work but i'm very excited about my sony uh tc d5 recorder there it's a good looking and it's like a field recorder and it looks yeah it totally is and it's got the little shoulder strap oh, and it yeah. even came with the leather bag which covered most of it which is why it's in such good shape most of it was actually covered all the time uh and no corrosion in the batteries everything's metal on it like this battery port has a locking chamber thing. 
I love this thing. It's gorgeous. You can totally pretend you're like a 1980s, like ambient record producer. Exactly. I'll carry around a little microphone. I'm excited. <laughs> Takes two D cells. Um, and okay, so moving on to slightly more modern things, but not super modern. The game of operation. Uh, I teased it last week and then built it on my uh, live stream uh, and put out a learn guide on Friday. So this is almost the final one. I actually made a nicer final graphic that I didn't build into my own one. Um, I improved the graphics, but uh, this uses the capacitive touch on our Circuit Playground Express, and I have little foil um, edges on these ports. So when you try to reach in there with your tweezers, if you touch the edge, it's going to beep, and the and the colors will change to let you know that you've done something bad. Um, I also made some 3D printed versions of the little pieces and included the STL file if you want to do those. But the ones I have in here are actually um, just a printout on cardboard. So you can see there's like the little yellow uh, light bulb and the red LED up in there. So super fun project. I think it's pretty straightforward and easy to make for people. And uh, you can sort of change it to do other graphics if you like. And then uh, last thing is I'm going to show my desktop for a moment, if I can switch to it quickly and successfully here. Uh, let's see. Where is that? It's another world. It's the left it's arrow. the second one down on the left, green. Like green yeah. with TV with a white arrow in it. There you go. All right. So uh, these images here are a couple of light paintings I did uh, last night and the night before. Uh, you can see I've got this rainbow, which is like a continuous... Uh, uh, pattern, which I'm just moving the wand around, and it's it's wherever I go, I'm going to get this rainbow pattern. Uh, and these are NeoPixels, 30 of them. Uh, and then the one uh, over here of the ghost, this is a bitmap. And so uh, this is some really cool code that uh, Phil B wrote that uh, allows us to create a 30 by up to 100, I think we might be able to fit more in there, uh, image that uh, will change so it's essentially uh, rastering the graphics sideways as you move so on a long exposure photograph you can uh, sort of print something in midair so I'm having a lot of fun with that uh, trying that out and I'm going to be showing the build on the live stream tomorrow let me switch uh, back it switched back uh, so this is my light painting wand that I've made and this is actually using our hollow wing uh, which is our feather m0 express hollow wing I'm hiding his little face there. We're not using the monitor on this one. Uh, but I am like really happy about how this board works for this type of project because we've got a uh, sensor in three pin that I'm using for a potentiometer that I can use to adjust the rate of playback if I want to uh, not squeeze the image. Uh, we've got a battery in on it and charging circuit. And we've got uh, a little NeoPixel uh, three pin plug there. So I've got a NeoPixel strip on here. And uh, it's actually a very simple build that uh, I will uh, share with you the materials and how I made it tomorrow on the show. So tune in, but it's a, a fun one that people can make. And then you get to just practice right making your pixel art 30 by whatever pixel art uh, for yeah. you. And we'll have some examples. And this is in Circuit Python. So it's like you just yeah. drag the image on. It's like super easy. Probably our easiest light painting project ever. Very easy. Light it's painting easy. projects never get old. At some point, the learn guides will be 1% painting. Good. Painting. That's fine. That's our goal. Now that all right, Brennan, how are you doing? Doing well. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, so I'm going to some festivals this fall, uh, where riding around on bikes with a group of your friends is kind of one of the main things you do. And I have friends who tend to get lost, so um, my goal is to put a little box like so on everybody's handlebars and have a little display on top that points in the direction of where everybody else is at. Um, so this is a Feather M4 running Circuit Python, um, and it's on the little tripler board that we have, and it's got an Ultimate GPS Feather Wing and a LoRa Feather Wing on it. Um, LoRa is like pretty cool, uh, low bandwidth radio with pretty good range on it. Um, so it'll send the coordinates of this box out in a little packet to everybody in the group, and that'll get interpreted as, hey, there's a little light here, um, and then there's a compass module here, so it kind of knows what direction it's pointed, and we can say, hey, I'm going you know, northwest. My friend is over here. Display the light at the correct angle. All right. Okay. I hope you 
I could have used that in some previous festival trips myself. I hope you get lost, but then find yourself. Yes. I yeah, that's the goal is to actually find somebody. Yeah. All right, All right thanks, cool. so thanks for the update. All right, no. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so today we have a Internet of Things project. This is our little little um, mailbox. So uh, Brent actually came up with this project. It, it uses Adafruit I/O and if this then that to basically uh, make this red flag move up when I receive an email. I just sent myself an email, so hopefully um, the, uh, the if this then that servers aren't being hammered right now. <laughs> so hopefully. This will this will actually do something. Live but inside, yeah, but inside the mailbox we have uh, the Feather Huzzah with the ESP eighty two sixty six. So it's the Wi Fi module. So it is connected to my router, and on it we have the Adafruit I/O library for Arduino. So um, with the library comes with um, quite a few examples, and one of them is uh, the one that Brent put together that uh, you can put your um, your uh, your if this and that. Uh, creds in there, and you can basically say, when I get an email, um, I want to uh, have the servo go up to make my flag go up. OK, uh, well, I believe you. If then this set usually, oh, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. It usually has like a, a five minute delay sometimes. Yeah, it could be about five minutes. Usually, it's pretty quick. Um, but again, it, it kind of varies. But it's a pretty good little kind of thing to have in the background, just kind of sitting there. Um, so there's a learn guide that you guys can uh, check out. It's on the learning system. And uh, the files are up on Thingiverse and, and GitHub. Uh, pretty fun and easy project. It also has a good use of like um, uh, vinyl cut graphics. So we got a little Nimbus guy. Also got another email. Hey. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, by the way, you can just go up and down constantly because you all you can. You could, yeah. You have complete <laughs> control over how, how you want the servo to happen. Uh, some folks in the, in, the, in the comments are actually uh, planning to make this or scale this up for their actual mailbox, which would be pretty neat. That's cool. Yeah. So that's the project we have today, and we also have some other things that we're working on. Um, yeah, that's pretty that's much sweet. it. All right, thanks for the update. Oh, uh, Thank you. Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. It's good to see you. Hey. So um, I'm uh, all excited about Halloween this month. And um, right now, I just started this project. It's not finished yet, um, but it is a, it's going to become a Medusa headdress. I've got three snakes on there at the moment, and they're moving, and they're glowing. Ooh, um, cool. um, right now I'm using a cricket board and a circuit playground. Um, and I've got two servos on there right now, and I 3D printed a little mount for it. Um, so I have space for two more servos. As soon as those arrive, I'm going to add them on there and be able to put up to eight different snakes that move, uh, which will be pretty cool. And then they also glow. Uh, the snakes have light pipe inside of them, which I'm hooking up. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of bright. But I'm hooking up just the light pipe directly to the LEDs on top of the circuit playground. And then I have the servo uh, moving a wire inside the snake. So that's how they're both moving and glowing. Um, my favorite little little thing is that the snake heads are actually just made out of hot glue with a couple of little rhinestones glued on there. And they glow like crazy with a little bit of a light pipe. Oh, just, that's awesome. I was wondering, like, how did you get the heads to look so like cool? And they got little dots on them. So that's pretty fun. Um, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. I want to do a whole Medusa costume for Halloween. I'm thinking about making a Infinity Mirror Perseus shield also <laughs> to you know as a group costume, which could be a lot of fun. So cool. kind of, this week, I hope that it, it gets finished up and it's gonna look really snaky. I have a thousand more snakes that I'm gonna put on there. So. Oh yes, <laughs> never enough snakes. All right. All right, thanks. Oh, and Dan, yep. special guest. Hello. Hi. So I just, we have, um, I don't have any computers to show off because when I was doing computers, they were too big to like <laughs> put in the closet and, and stir away. So this is a Fortran manual. This is the, I learned to program from this book. It's as old as I am. It's from 1957. And it was my mother's when she was um, doing programming. She learned to program. Dude, heirloom Fortran books. That's where it's at. That's right. My mother is a physicist, so she there, and so she used that. That was very helpful. And then the other artifact is um, when I was in junior high and high school, I did some stuff with so I small scale integrated circuits. So this is a data book for Motorola resistor transistor logic, which was 
the standard stuff there. Most of these are like 50 years old. These data sheets are about 50 years old. Yeah, there's a I, I, have, I, mean, I have some left over, but they look like any other integrated circuit. So I'm not going to show you. Did they have a stamp on it that said 1973? What? This, the stamp on the front, does it say 1970? Yeah. yeah. And inside there are a bunch of data, a bunch of these are like here, October 67. Can you see that? Oh, they give you the schematic for it. They're like, hey. Yeah, that's right. This is a complicated one. This is like. There's at least 20 transistors in there. Yeah. So complicated. Yeah, yeah it's like flip flops and adders and quad two input NAND gates and things like that. All right. All right. Very cool. Well, if you ever get a moment, um, make sure there's a digital copy of the Fortran manual on online somewhere. And if there's not, scan it in and, and get it on archive. Right. Well, I do have, I have a screen share. If I have screen share. Um, let's see. This, I have, I have this scanned. This is the um, uh, data sheet for the 8008, which is, the precursor to the 8080. This was the first 8-bit one, and I have a one for the 4-bit, the Intel 4004 also. So this is April 72, and uh, I have that. And I was worried about copyright, but it's too old now to worry about. I'll just put this up. I don't think Intel is going to come after you. Intel has bigger problems. Yeah, they other problems. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. yeah. All right. So that's it. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. All right, All right. Sean. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hey. Um, it's been a while since I've been on. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember I originally showcased my little Neo 7 segments that I built. Ooh, cute. Uh, which were really cool. And I always uh, felt a bit annoyed that I couldn't display a complete character set on there. And I, I was experimenting with other ideas. And I built what I called a, a Neo X segment. Ooh. They are an absolute pain to assemble, especially by hand. I have no pick and place. <laughs> so, um, and the bill of uh, materials is quite expensive on them. So I was ex experimenting with other ideas and I came up with dun, dun, dun. I, my laser segment display. Ooh, so, nice. Good use of diffusion there. Sorry? Good use of diffusion there. Yeah, so it's a combination of, um, and I've got an empty board here, of just one Neo pixel per yeah. segment, and then using um, laser cut acrylic that look like these little things here to diffuse them. Uh, unfortunately, I blew my laser cutter up on Monday. It set it on fire, so I need to get that fixed. Um, and I've also made a, a seven segment version as well. So that's what a seven segment board looks like. And then there's a, a cover like that that goes with it. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about these because I'm going to be able to, I think I've got um, 58 characters that this can currently display. And I can also do some lowercase characters as well. So it's just running off a trinket M0 at the moment. Um, so I'm going to start building some displays out of these. It look pretty cool. That's great work. And you have room on the back for an SE on show and tell sticker. So email I do. Yes. Support it, email support at Adafruit and we'll send you out one. Come back when you uh, continue to make more of them. Cool. I'll well, just plug them in together. That would be yeah. so cool. You can make a, a you know larger thing. Yeah, they've got um on each side. I've uh, got header pins at the top that you can solder um, header pins on. But I've also put uh, pads on the back at the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see. So you yeah. can either go in and out, or you can plug them into something like a uh, pogo pins on the bottom. So it's getting in out and power as well. Okay. So yeah, lots of nice. different ways of putting them together. Next, Next up is Jay, and then after that, we're going to go to JMK. So Jay, right. and then JMK. Jay, hello. Hi, everyone. Hey. Um, so I have an Arduino Uno, and it uses an electric microphone and two displays to decode Morse. The microphone is a Max 9814 from Adafruit, and the small display here is a SSD 1306. Um, the SSD shows, the 1306 shows a waterfall for detected signals, and then the other, the LCD character display shows um, decoded messages. So I've done about a thousand iterations of code and hardware, um, and uh, so this is the... This is one the, thousand. Yeah. So this, this one is the Demorsify version two. Um, so Whoa. this is, uh, yeah, this is the most recent one. So I'm going to try and do a quick demo of the Morse code. Okay. All right. All right so here we go. Yeah. 
Right. Is yeah. it waterfall? Can you hold it up a little bit? Okay. Oh, yeah, for the waterfall? Oh, yeah, I see. So it's, it's, that's where it's detecting the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you back it off a little bit, it'll focus. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. No, yeah. it's, it's Telio World and Hello World. Hello and World, zero, one, zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Yeah, it worked. Yay, live demo. Thank you. Awesome. All right, I'll email support at adafruit.com and we'll send you a bunch of dots and dashes. Congratulations. And a sticker. On, uh, <laughs> congratulations on a, it's a very intense project and you, you did great with it. Thank you. It's Good got work. a great user interface too. I like it. All right. All right. Okay, JMK, JMK play us out. All Wait, right. Hey. Yeah, so um, I remember I showed maybe it was last week, maybe it was two weeks ago. I forgot by now. I've gone like 20, 30 times on this show already. So um, the 3D print came. It's in a nice black color. And um, that's not what I'm going to show. And I made this too. This is not what I'm going to show too. I'm just showing a bunch of things. That's it's cool. a, it's, so I had these um, extender cables for um, JST batteries. What I did is I, but they had no, they were just pure leads on the other end. They weren't like an, an JST input. So I um, twisted wires together and I made it two pins, which is great. But this is what I made with Adabox. Wow. It's a cricket. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, we've got, we've got the cricket on the inside with all the batteries and the circuit playground with the speaker that I haven't yet figured out how to work with. And I don't know why there's a micro python right there. That's cool. <laughs> you, no, no, like just stick boards on. Yeah, and um, so let's just turn this on. We've got wheels. So this actually w would move around. I can't really show that right now. Yeah, that's but, okay. Yeah, that moves around. Um, but one of the cool things, the reason this is here is because this is, I have two of these now because I found one in the couch so that I lost like a year ago. So now I have two. So I'm using this. Uh, so I guess I decided, well, I wanted to make it so I could have a camera on here. Yeah. So I was able to get this um, attached on here on the inside and sort of just be poking holes in the cardboard. But hopefully I'll find a better mounting system eventually. And yeah, that can act as my camera. So that's all it. right. You made a little telepresence robot. That's awesome. Well, good work. All right. Good work. And if you want a sticker, you know how to get hold of us. Yeah, it needs more stickers. Yep. You can right. send you some stickers. Okay, that's the show and tell everybody this yeah. week. Thanks so much for making this the best Thanks, half an hour everybody. every single week. Thanks, John. John. Thank Thanks, you, Scott. Scott. Thank you, Noah, Pedro, John, Jim K. Jay, Jay, Dan, Dan and Brennan. Brennan, and all the other folks. We're here every single week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer in just a couple minutes. That was awesome. Right, bye, Great everybody. projects, everybody. Yeah. I see you. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. Okay, bye-bye.